All right, so this is the February scroller box. And if you look at it, I think the uh, post office worker may have sat on it, <laughs> but I'm sure the art supplies are all right. So we're going to open it up and make something with it. All right, inside we have the tissue paper, which contains the art supplies. And we have, what are these? Oh my gosh, <laughs> the first thing on here are these. these are the Karen brush marker pros. These actually came in the February, what the heck is that? <laughs> these actually came in the February Powerful Packs box. So I've used these before. <laughs> that doesn't, I don't say that very often, do I? We've got gold, lilac with a C, last time it had a K, <laughs> blender, so a colorless blender and lush green. Look at the spring. Now, I think I learned a bit from my last time using these and somebody suggests I try mixing them with water. So we'll have to try that this time. Also in the box, we have this mystery pen. Let's see, is there... Oh, there's something written on it. It's not a complete mystery. Let's see. The Spectrum Noir Aqua Tint. So I'm gonna guess that it's kind of like a watercolor, but also not because it would have just said watercolor, wouldn't it have? Okay, we'll find out <laughs> when we swatch them. Let's see, also in here, these look like something you'd use in elementary school. I wonder if these are all like water blendable. Ooh, two stickers. <laughs> That's special for the month. We have this, which I definitely had in elementary school and middle school and probably high school. And it may still have. Do you have a name for these? Just pe pencil cap eraser. Oh, I see what's going on here. I, I like to whine about pencils not coming with erasers, so I feel personally rewarded. <laughs> this is the Karen Dosh Edelweiss pencil. The cool thing about a scroller box is that it um, comes from the UK. So there's often art supplies that people who grow up in that country see all the time. And people who grow up in the United States like me don't see all the time. So it's fun to experiment with them, even when it's like something cheaper. But I see paintbrush on there, which usually means it's water soluble. So I think I'm figuring this out. Here is a little Happy Fruities Moam. Looks like it is orange flavored. And lastly, the art line drawing system. I don't know why there's weird flakies everywhere. <laughs> this is the art line drawing system 0.2 acid free pigment ink water based water resistant for drawing graphic design illustrations and documents. Ooh, look how teeny tiny that one is. I'm always thrilled when we get fine liner because I go through those things like crazy. They don't last that long. Maybe I just don't know how to take care of them. <laughs> we have, oh, whoa. This paper feels, I think this is like vinyl. They sound the same. <laughs> There's a ton of gorgeous feathers on here and they're drawn by Serena Rina. Hey, look, I'm the featured artist. Woo. <laughs> Serena is, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is it like tsunami where you don't pronounce the T? I'm gonna go with Serena. Her Instagram is Serena Rina Art, right there. Boop, boop. <laughs> Ooh, and there's paper in here too. In scope, a little movie term for you. So if I look at the menu, it lists all of the art supplies and as well as the paper. So this is St. Cuffelbert's Mill Botanical Ultra Smooth 300 GSM paper. Got a nice wibble to it. I like it. <laughs> oh, I didn't do a wibble test on this. Oh, that's different. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> What is this like brown flaky stuff that's everywhere? It came out of the box. Oh, there's another one. What are they coming from? So they actually included the colorless blender with the pro marker. So I wonder if that works like adding water. So I'll have to test each of these with water and then also just with the colorless blender. I'm going to pull it out with the colorless blender and see what happens. Oh wow, that just, just keeps going, doesn't it? I wonder if you wait for it to dry, if it does the same thing. Can you blend it out to nothing? Ooh, just about, look at that. Try lilac with the C. I wonder if it's any different than my lilac with a K, but I feel like the number was 226, but I could just be making that up. <laughs> this time I'm gonna try it with water. Grab a paintbrush, some clean water, courtesy of Mike Wazowski. And let's try this out with water. Whoa! I 
I'm using up too much paper for this. This stuff's probably not cheap. Ooh, wow. I definitely, ooh, look at that purple and yellow together. I definitely like these better with water. I think I am gonna get a better result in the outcome by adding water to these pens <laughs> versus when I didn't. If you wanna see what I created when I didn't add water to these pens, I will have a link to that palette full packs box. But today I'm gonna be using what I've learned from that and hopefully creating something pretty cool. All right, let's try this weird mystery pen. I think it's so funny that like there's barely any label on it. It's just very faint, very tiny little words right there. I don't know if you can see them. You have to, okay, you have to remove this. I've had pens that are kind of similar to this. Is that supposed to go any more than that? Maybe not. And then you like pull up. Okay. So far, so good. Let's see what color. Ah, it's green, it's green. So it's this really pretty green color. That feels way more like watercolor than these two did. These still, like I said in the last video, these remind me so much of India inks, but they don't say that's what they're made out of. I'm a bigger fan of this green versus that green. And the eraser. Okay, they both work. That's all I can really ask for from a pencil. These I'm not crazy about. They still feel sort of like an elementary school art supply. <laughs> yeah, one of the perks of these pens is they say if you forget to put the cap on, it won't dry out for days, which I feel like the thing you want in kids markers. <laughs> the paper's also buckling, even though I have it taped down. Ooh, that's a really cool effect. I love the gold color of this when you first put down the pen and then when it like fades out to that yellow. Ooh, that's cute. Since they provided these interesting elongated shaped papers, I do want to try and use that as part of the challenge for creating our illustration. And the prompt word was plumage. So they want us to draw some kind of feathers, I assume. So with that and these art supplies, I'll have to create an illustration on this paper. <laughs> these colors remind me of the tooth fairy from Legend of the Guardians. Is that what it was called? Rise of the Guardians? Yeah, one of those, thanks. <laughs> but also it'd be kind of cute. I have a character, like a princess, but her outfit is very feathered inspired. I wonder if I could try and use these colors, change up her color scheme a bit, or just design a whole new something. Cause it would be really fun to do like a ball gown with these colors and feathers, but she doesn't really wear a ball gown, so. So I'm just playing around with some of the art supplies right here, getting a feel for them. Yeah, I just had a little bit of line art there. I'll just erase it. Now, if I'm doing my original character, her skin is pink. We'll try to use some of this lilac. Maybe do one of these. And then uh, put that down like this. I don't know, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Wow, that actually, I think, is spot on for her skin color. I'm just doing a color key, so I'm not too worried about the paintbrush being too big. I'm just trying to get the values and everything and seeing how they'll work together with the different hues and tones. And I like to use a bigger brush for that sort of thing so that I'm not worried about the details. I'm worried more about the overall illustration. Do, let me just add some here. It'll kind of like be our palette. We could even go, I really like the gold, so I'm gonna grab this. Just draw straight in with the gold. Fade that out with the water. Ooh, that's really, really pretty. I can't decide if I wanna skip the green altogether though. Ooh, these are, okay, I'm liking these art supplies a lot more. I kind of take back almost everything I said <laughs> from the last one. This is actually really fun. The way that you can build them up and layer them. I think limiting my color palette might help the drawing have a better overall result. Even though I'm kind of tempted to use all the colors because they gave me all the colors. So what I think I'm gonna do, that needs to dry, doesn't it? Well, I can move it maybe. Oh gosh. Ugh. Okay, so it's actually like ripping the paper. So I'm either going to not tape the finished drawing or <laughs> I'm gonna have to like remove some of the tackiness first before I put it onto the paper. I'm actually gonna give this a couple more tries in my sketchbook and then I'll come back to you 
after I've played around with it, see what colors I like. We're gonna see how these act on this paper. Ooh, I think they dried way faster on this paper. All right, so I'm not gonna do color swatches on this sketchbook. That's been established. But I can try to come up with an idea for the pose I'm using our little pencil here. Try more stylized. So I've drawn her a couple times here and I, I think she looks best in an extremely stylized art style. So like the big eyes and non-existent nose because um, she's not supposed to be human. She's supposed to be like a fairy. I still need to figure out the pose I want to go with for the final drawing, which I have, I think this is the same size here. Let me see. Yeah, pretty close. So if I can make the pose fit in here, it will fit on our piece of paper there too. So I made this little thumbnail right there, if you can see it. And I'm gonna try and translate that to a larger size. And if I like it, we'll start drawing it on the bigger size there. So it's kind of like this sort of half sitting, floating pose. She's a princess of fairies. And I guess she doesn't really have wings, I don't think, but she flies off of pure feather magic. And I've decided to give her more of a mohawk sort of it's still kind of like that ponytail but it starts a little mohawky <laughs> now there's a lot of space here so i think i'm going to pull the arms out instead of having them tucked in like in the thumbnail although wait the, she has that like feather tutu that i want to draw so maybe i could pull an arm up this way and keep this arm tight against her so maybe the hands up like this with their little ankles tucked around each other. I think this hand can go behind the skirt. I wonder if I could try and put it at an angle instead of straight on. You can almost see through the paper. <laughs> I can barely see it and my phone's not quite big enough. I'm just try and trace like the main elements. At least all the proportions are right. Move this out of the way here and I can start sketching. Yeah, let's work on this. It's kind of like working out a puzzle. Cause I like have all the basic things, but I gotta figure out the rest. And then the way I get it to look like a feather is I just draw a straight line through it, through the center, and then always pull out towards the uh, front of it. And then you kind of get that feather texture. I used to make a mistake of just drawing like straight like that. Think about making her barefoot for this. Little pizzas. And on this one, the big toe would be here. Don't want to get that wrong. I've messed that up many a time. <laughs> right, this is working out pretty well so far. <laughs> and then this hair is pulled back like this, something like that. So here is the finished sketch. Now I just need to go over it with the line art, this thing, the art line drawing system. Eyes first, cause that's just what I always do. Got those bug eyes. Cause she's not human. Add some shading to this hand so it looks even further in the background. Then we have these legs. And toesies. There we go. Looks pretty good. Okay, let's erase some of these pencils. Hopefully the lines are all dry. All right, so now it comes down to adding the color. So if I look at my thumbnail here, I think what we'll do is go ahead and do the skin because I know I want that purple. And then we'll do the dress just yellow. And then I'll see if I want to add any green or blue. Because as of right now, I'm not feeling the green or blue. I'll use this piece of paper here as a palette while I can. <laughs> oh, I should have been using the smaller paintbrush. Let me switch that out. <laughs> yeah, this is working much better. I can color around these lines. This paper works really well with these pens. I'm very, very happy about that. Doing my best to try and get an even coat, so not letting it dry before I finish the section. And then I love the, how flat it dries. That's really pretty. I think I want it a little darker at the toes. And right, now I'm gonna make sure this is completely dry before I start going in with the yellow because I don't really want it to be all smudgy smudge, you know? I want it to be nice and clean and crisp. 
Okay, so now that that's dry, I'm going to take the gold color and try and create that gradient that I really liked. So we're gonna really put a lot of this down near the top. Hopefully it won't dry. I'll quickly grab my paintbrush and blend it out. I might need a bigger paintbrush for this. Isn't that pretty? That kind of looks like a daisy, doesn't it? But I might layer up near the bodice here. Pull away from that. I need to darken up the lips. Let me try and do that. I don't know why I'm whispering. Oh, and then let's try and make her hair the same gold color maybe as the dress. And then I can always decide if I want to add in that blue, but I don't know. I'm kind of not feeling too hot about that idea. Let's make the ends darker. I can even go in with the pen and add the shading where I want it, where I want it to be darker. Ooh, stripey feathers like a pheasant feather. I used too much water, so it ended up going outside the lines. Luckily it's yellow and that's not something you really see, but <laughs> I can see it. Down here is dry. I'm gonna try and add those stripes for that pheasant feather look. I just really like how you're able to, you know, add that wash of color and blend it out, but you also can get like some finer details by using the actual pen. I just think that's really, really fun. I might try and take some of this yellow. Um, no, it's a little too gray. It doesn't have as much saturation to it. I'm still having a hard time not going outside the lines, even with the tiny baby brush. Although I just realized that I forgot to draw these little shoulder feathers. Oh well. <laughs> but I do think we need something yellow down here. So I'm just gonna draw the little guys here. Little feathers. She's molting a little, I guess. Erase the pencil. See if I can stay inside the lines this time. Okay, so now that I have the character done, I kinda wanna go in with this pen and sort of outline it a bit. Give it a background and an atmosphere. Try and keep it light. I don't want it to be competing with the tones of the drawing. So let me grab some water here and try and blend those out, lighten that up. See, now that it's lighter, it's not competing with the character in the foreground and it fades more into the background. It's sort of misty. I feel like it's not showing up on camera, but it's really, really obvious here. I really like this green. It's almost a teal. I like that green. It's it's definitely got like a magic vibe to it. I don't know what it is, just the tone. But yeah, there's my drawing. I really like this color. It doesn't look anything like this bottle, but I like this color better than this color on the bottle. So <laughs> we good there. And I'm much more happy with the way this turned out versus the last time I used these brush marker pros. And definitely you guys' suggestion of adding water, which Scrawlerbox also suggested, definitely helped with my um, value problem. Um, I do notice one thing in my thumbnail, I diluted the purple a lot more. So the purple was lighter and that made it so that there was more contrast between that purple color and the gold color. Whereas here, the gold and the purple are kind of competing in values right there, but I'm still happy with it. I'm learning more each time. That's what matters. <laughs> That sounds so cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> anyway, I do want to thank you guys for watching. I also want to thank Scrawlerbox for sending me this box for free to try out and to share with you. If you want to get your own Scrawlerbox subscription or if you want to learn more about them, I will have a link in the description to their website. I want to thank you guys all for watching and I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.